Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, whatever time of the day it is that you're tuning in. Welcome to another episode of the Resilience Rising Podcast with me, Naturally Cinnamon. I am a therapist, life coach, resilience cultivator, and the founder and CEO of Jamila Wellness LLC, where women go to be well and live beautifully. You can find us at resiliencerisingpodcast.com. You can also send in your questions, topics, comments, and feedback at resiliencerisingpodcast at gmail.com. Like this, love this, share it, rate it, comment, but most important, make sure that you're subscribed and following. Here's another episode. Hope you enjoy. Hello, everybody. How are you? So I'm going to get right into it. I got a question um, from a young lady through the Instagram Resilience Rising podcast account, and I just want to see if I can try to address that. Um, she asked me to for her to remain anonymous, so we will do that. I will honor that. And I, but I did reach out to the Resilience Rising community, which is a Facebook group. If you're interested, uh, go to resiliencerisingpodcast.com and click on join the Facebook group and, you know, send the request to join the Facebook group. What we do in the Facebook group is we have um, discussions leading up to certain podcast episodes such as this one. So her question was this. Dear Miss Naturally Cinnamon, thank you for this podcast and thank you for admitting your struggle with depression. I also have a struggle with depression and am considering going to counseling. However, I'm having trouble talking to my family members and friends about going to counseling for depression. How can I better explain to them how I feel? Can you give me some verbiage to use? or some descriptive descriptive terms. Okay, so I'll do my best. I know how I feel sometimes, but what I did do, like I said, was I reached out to the Resilience Rising community of ladies and I asked them as well. So I'm going to read a few of their responses. But before I do that, I want to say to this young lady, thank you for reaching out Thank you for um, considering counseling. Thank you for doing that. So kudos to you. Pat yourself on the back. Give yourself a huge hug and congratulate yourself for being willing to take that first step to go to counseling to help um, uh, work through your depression or your depressive symptoms. That in itself always sounds like it's such an easy thing to do. Oh, get a therapist, go to counseling, you know, but it's not always as easy. You know, it's, it's easier said than done. It's easy to say, you should go to counseling. And that's easier to say than to say to yourself, I should go to counseling and then actually finding the therapist to go. So if you find yourself stuck, please don't hesitate to reach back out to me. You can go back through resilience rising podcast at gmail.com or you can go back through Instagram and send me a DM like you did before. So kudos to you for reaching out to go to a therapist. Um, I, I want to congratulate you on that one huge major step. So kudos to you. And uh, the next thing I want to congratulate you on and give you a big, big hug is being brave enough to have the conversation with your loved ones. That's really, really hard. Um, if you listen to um, my episode, the second episode of this podcast where I talked about being um, diagnosed, how I got diagnosed, I did another interview with uh, the Culture and Conversations podcast. Um, look them up, Culture and Conversations. And I did a interview. The name of that episode is Jamila Wellness. That's my company, by the way. And he asked me, had, you know, I was telling him about when I was diagnosed and he asked me had I told my family and I went two years being diagnosed with clinical depression before I finally told my parents. Um, I had two friends that knew and that was it. I didn't tell any other friends, any other family members. I was in a relationship. He did not know. I kept that a big secret and that was very, very difficult to do. It was hard 
to do because there were times when I wanted to just scream and say, you have no idea how I'm feeling right now. And of course they didn't because I didn't tell them. So kudos to you for being brave enough and having the courage to want to talk to your loved ones about it. So depression and even anxiety. And the reason I'm going to throw anxiety in here is because it can it can bring forth anxiety thinking about how do I tell them? And if, if your anxiety peaks enough and you start to feel like I'm so, I'm so nervous, I can't do this. I'm not going to do this right. Depression can slide right in there too. So I polled the community and let's see what they said. One person said, when depressed, I felt hopeless, numb, zombie-like day to day. I was also very emotionless, but spent a lot of time crying. And she says that was her release. She said when she would feel anxious, it would scare her because during the attacks, it felt like she couldn't control it. I'm going to come back to panic attacks because I've had a few of those as well. Not a lot, but I think maybe about three or four throughout my lifetime. So we'll, we'll cover panic attacks later and I'll try to describe how those felt for me as well. But back to depression, we have another person in the Resilience Rising community that said, it feels like someone is slowly taking my air to breathe away. And no matter how hard I try, I can't seem to get it back. Wow. One person said that she could go on and on. But the one thing she will say is this. There's a lot going on, but nothing at all. You want to cry for no reason, but for lots of reasons at the same time. And yes, yes, I I know how that feels. Crying, and I'm going to be transparent. That was me earlier today, maybe about mm, three hours ago or so. I sat on the couch and felt like crying. And I'm like, wait, why? Why am I crying? Why do I, well, why do I feel like crying? And honestly speaking, I would not allow myself to cry. But in retrospect, um, looking back, I probably should have just let the tears come and, and let it go. Because as the other person said, tears can be cleansing. It can just be a release. And, and if you're feeling full and you just need to let some of the pressure off, let some of the pressure out, you know? So I probably should have, but when you feel that, when you think you have no reason to cry, you may tend to stop yourself from crying. Another person says that it's all consuming and draining. You can't manage anything and any decision you have to make is stressful. I also agree with that. It's like just having to make a decision. It's like, oh my God, can somebody just, (laughs) if you're really feeling overwhelmed, deciding what to eat for dinner that night can break you. It can absolutely break you. If someone says, um, well, what are you going to eat for dinner? I don't know. Well, you got to eat something. Well, I don't know what I want to eat. I'll figure it out when I'm hungry. But you got to eat something. What are you going to eat? That can just. I don't know, that could just send someone who's right at the tip of the, who's right at the tip that can send you over. Another person said depression. Well, they found this online and and sent it to me to say that this is how they would describe depression. Depression is when you feel like you're the most unwanted person in the universe. Ouch. (laughs) Ouch. But yeah, it can it can feel that way sometimes or your or your mind can make you think that sometimes like, you know, like I said, if you're feeling depressed and you're willing to talk to your friends and loved ones, the reason that's so courageous is because the fear of not being understood could really be debilitating. But I am so proud of this young lady that she's not allowing it to debilitate her. She has used that to reach out to someone saying, well, maybe in case I can't figure out how to put it to them, can you help me figure out how to put it to them? So I'm going to keep congratulating you because you, your steps that you're making are, are scary. They're big steps, but you're making them. And I'm really happy for you. This um, young man said, depression is much harder for guys because we are, quote, not supposed to cry. We are not supposed to be emotional. 
and talking to other guys about it gets really awkward really fast. Now that is absolutely accurate. That is absolutely accurate for those that think, see, women talk more about depression because, well, we talk more, number one. And also, we are more often than men allowed to be emotional. Men are just not allowed to be emotional for the most part. And I'm glad to see that that trend is shifting and that it's okay for men to cry. And it's okay for men to cry publicly more so than it used to be. But in some cultures and in some areas and in some mindsets, it is still not okay for men to be emotional or for boys to be emotional. And you can't cry. So what do they do? They bottle it up. And they bottle it up and they keep bottling it up. So it is much harder. Um, it is harder for men typically and generally speaking to be depressed and to try to talk to other men about it. It's, it is more, a little more difficult than it is for women. So I do want to acknowledge that, um, gentlemen, and say I do agree with you, sir. Here's another for me, it's hopeless, like an extreme sadness and, I'm sorry, for me, it feels like extreme sadness and hopelessness, a feeling of loneliness and just feeling like there's no way out, no desire to do anything that you used to love doing and not wanting to be around people. Yes, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Let's see. We have someone that said total listlessness. That's a good word. Listlessness. <laughs> Things don't taste the same and you feel void of feelings. Yeah. Numb is, is, is very good. Someone else used the word numb and that's, that's very accurate. And it feels like you're never doing, this another person said, it feels like you're never doing enough, like something is missing and you just want to sleep. My God, that is so true. You just want to sleep because it's like, it's exhausting. You're exhausted. And it seems, it, it sounds hard to explain because if you didn't do anything, why are you so exhausted? That's, that's what someone who's not in the moment or does not know what it feels like to be in the moment, um, that's something they may think. I don't understand how you could be exhausted when you haven't done anything. And yeah, it, it is exhausting. You do feel exhausted. And this is the last one I'm going to read. It says, for me, it's just that lonely feeling like no one understands you. Like you're never good enough. Like you've hit rock bottom and can't seem, wait, and can't see your way out. It's like a failure or a reject feeling like you're constantly judged and never appreciated. <sighs> Now, for those of you listening who do not deal with depression, I know that sounded like a lot. <laughs> I know. And, and I'm laughing, but it's not funny. I know it sounded like, well, God, that is horrible. I know. I know it. I know it does. And this is how I describe, this is one of the ways I try to describe um, depression to someone else. And it's worked a few times, so I'm going to explain it again. Let's say that someone who is, I'm going to use this word that I don't like a whole lot, but I'm going to use it anyway, normal, okay? Let's say, let's compare someone that's, quote, and you can't see me, because I'm, but I'm using air quotes, normal versus someone who deals with being clinically depressed. The person that is, quote, unquote, again, normal, may wake up on a regular morning and let's let's think of it like it's a charged battery like you're charging your cell phone overnight and when you unplug your cell phone in the morning it's on a hundred percent battery so let's pretend you're the cell phone you've got your battery you've slept through the night and you wake up and when you get out of bed you know when you wake up not even when you get out of bed when you wake up you're on a hundred percent okay hundred percent energy so you get out of bed you go to the bathroom, you get showered, you get, you know, ready for work, you get dressed, you go into the closet, you get dressed, you go into your kitchen, grab yourself some breakfast or, or whatever you're going to do, get yourself together, you get into your vehicle or you get, you know, however you're going to work that day, bus, 
uh, subway, train, walking, driving, whatever. You are on your way to work. When you walk out your door, heading to wherever you're going that day, maybe you've spent, I don't know, five to seven percent of your energy just getting dressed, just getting out of bed, getting in the shower, getting dressed, getting out of the house, about five percent of your energy. And then you get to work and you work for your eight or nine hour day, however long you're, you're, you're working. So let's just go with the typical eight hour day. Um, and you get a one hour lunch. So let's say you've worked for nine hours. By the time you get off of work, let's say your battery is at about, I don't know, 50%. Let's say 50%. And then let's say that you have some errands to run or you have to go to the gym or you've got to see about your kids or you've got to see about your parents or you've got to walk the dog or, you know, you've just got, you know, your other daily life things that you do when you get out of work before you, you know, call it like, okay, I'm home for the day. And let's say you spend another like 15% doing your running around. So now you get home by this time, let's say you spent, yeah, you're at 50% when you leave work and now you spend another 15%. So now you're at 35% when you get home, you cook and eat dinner, do a couple things around the house. By the time you're ready for bed or you're ready for your downtime to sit down on the couch and watch TV or to lay in the bed and watch your shows. Let's say you're at about 20 to or 15% and then you're ready to go to sleep. That is a typical air quotes, normal kind of a day. Now let's compare that to someone with depression. They wake up in the morning. Let's assume, first of all, they wake up on a hundred percent and that's an assumption. Because some people with depression may wake up feeling like you woke up on 50%. But let's just say you woke up on 100%. Someone with depression, getting out of bed may take 10% of their energy just to get out of bed. Because if you are in a depression wave, like a dip, you're having um, an episode, you you may just want to stay in the bed. You may not want to even get out of bed. I had an episode so bad once that I had to use the bathroom. I had stayed in bed so long and I didn't want to get up to use the bathroom. I didn't want to get up. It was that bad. So let's just say someone with depression wakes up and getting out of bed takes 10%. And I'm being generous because sometimes getting out of bed can take 50% of my energy. So, But let's just be nice and say it took 10 to 20%. I'll give it 20%. That's more accurate. I give it 20%. Then I have to crawl my, I pull myself into the bathroom and I have to take a shower and get ready for work. That's another 20%. Then I have to put on clothes. I have had days when I have gotten out of the bed. I have gone to, into the bathroom to take a shower and get myself ready for work. I have put on the clothes and could not get out of the front door to go to work. I just, I just couldn't do it. And I ended up calling in for a sick day or a personal day or something like that. I just couldn't, I just couldn't do it. I was like, I don't, I'm just, I'm just not going to make it. (laughs) I'm not going to make it today. Um, But let's say that this person makes it out the door. But now remember the air quotes, normal person got up, dressed and got up, ready, dressed and out of the door. And they took maybe seven to 10% of their energy, like 7% of their energy. Someone with clinical depression, that may have taken 50% of their energy just to get up, ready, dressed, and out of the door. So already they are dragging. I have had days when I've been late to work and somebody may say, you're late or you're always late. And I want to, but I don't say, but I want to say, you have no idea what it took for me to be standing here looking at you right now. You've got no idea. And I'm not even exactly sure how to express that to you in 10 words or less. So it's a struggle. (laughs) It is a struggle. And to answer the question that some people have and that Dave even asked me is about um, how is it that you can always be so exhausted when 
you didn't do anything, meaning I haven't done any physical running around and I'm not, you know, how can you be exhausted? A lot of people equate being exhausted to physical exhaustion, but mental exhaustion is, whoo, that thing can, it is wearing, it is taxing. Uh, mental exhaustion, emotional exhaustion, it is, oh my Lord, I could sleep for three days when I am mentally exhausted and I, bec- I can become mentally exhausted by trying to talk myself, just, just trying to talk myself around, through, or out of my depressive feelings or thoughts. I can try, yeah, you know, using your brain. Your brain is the one that's bringing these thoughts up, but you're trying to also use your brain to combat these same thoughts while working, while tackling day-to-day activities, while, you know, trying to keep your face on, while putting that mask on your face. Like, no, no, I'm fine. Everything's okay because I don't want you to ask me what's really wrong because you are not ready for this answer. (laughs) So I am going to wear this mask and tell you, I'm fine. I'm just a little tired right now. When really, yeah, I'm tired because my energy level is on 20% and it's only 11.30 a.m. And I'm ready to crawl myself back into bed. That's one of the ways that I try to explain to someone what it feels like to be in be in an episode of depression to to ride a wave of depression it's 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 draining it is exhausting it is taxing it is numbing it is weird it is it's um like someone said you feel like crying for no reason but for every reason Like there's no reason to cry, but you've got every reason to cry. Anxiety, I've told somebody, depression is kind of like feeling nothing. Anxiety is like feeling everything at one time. (laughs) It's like, I'll do another episode just on anxiety, but that's depression. Um, So the person that wrote me that will remain anonymous. I hope that myself and some of the Resilience Rising community was able to give you some more thoughts and verbs on how some other people describe how depression feels to them and how I described how depression feels to me to help you as you talk to your friends and family members and your loved ones and how as you talk through how you're feeling with um, the therapist that you find. Remember, if you need help finding a therapist or um, vetting a therapist because you you know you have to vet your therapists. You know, let's be let's be honest. Every profession has somebody that's not wonder a uh, wonderful spokesperson for their profession. So you got to vet your therapists as well. That's an again, that's another podcast episode. But if you need any help, please don't hesitate to reach out and we'll do the best that we can. Jamila Wellness will do the best that we can to help you wherever you are with whatever you need. So hope you enjoyed this episode, everybody. Give feedback and share it with somebody that you know needs it. Thanks for tuning in to Resilience Rising with Naturally Cinnamon. Life has a way of tossing unexpected trials and circumstances our way. We can't stop them, but we can better handle them by raising our resilience. Remember, you can find us at resiliencerisingpodcast.com on Instagram at Resilience Rising Podcast, and you can also send in a question or topic for this podcast by emailing us at resiliencerisingpodcast at gmail.com. Be sure to like this podcast, love it, share it, rate it, and comment, but most important, make sure that you've subscribed and that you're following. I'm Naturally Cinnamon. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night. Creative Director Jeremy Key for J. Key Collective. Music by A.J. Miles.